Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about Yoda in Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Mandalorian and more. As always my dear Megalorians, before we dive into it please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post a new video. We are on the road for 100,000 subscribers, thank you all so much for your support. But without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So let's begin with the biggest piece of news. According to MakingStarWars.net, two days ago Frank Oz was seen on the set of Obi-Wan Kenobi. The beloved puppeteer appearing on the set of Deborah Chow's upcoming series can only mean one thing, that Yoda is going to cameo. Now some of you might be confused because at this point in the timeline which is 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, Yoda is exiling on Dagobah. But we do know that in the time period between episode 3 and the original trilogy, he did communicate with Obi-Wan through the Force. Yoda exiled himself on Dagobah after he lost to Emperor Palpatine after Order 66. He chose Dagobah due to its high concentration of living force energy because he wanted to meditate during his exile, hoping to recount on the fall of the Jedi Order and to live in peaceful displacement from the Empire. Although now it's legends, in Heir to the Empire we learn that Yoda chose Dagobah to not be found by Palpatine. His force presence was masked by the proximity of the Dark Side Cave, as well as the sheer number of living creatures that he dwelled among. But nonetheless, Yoda stayed in contact with Obi-Wan on numerous occasions. Now speaking of Obi-Wan, he will have spent 10 years on Tatooine by the time we next see him, but that doesn't mean a Yoda cameo is impossible. Even a voice cameo requires the talent of Frank Oz, but the fact that he was seen on set makes me think he's going to do more than just the voice. If we do get Yoda in the flesh, it's going to be on Dagobah which we haven't seen in live action since the deleted scenes of episode 3. The planet, which is a fan favourite from the original trilogy, is also rumoured to feature in the Mandalorian universe. The natural cosmic force energy of the planet might play some kind of role in the Kenobi series, but either way, seeing Yoda again would be such a treat. 2017 was the last time we saw Yoda in live action as a force ghost in the very controversial Ryan Johnson movie, The Last Jedi. Opinions were very divided about about Yoda's cameo on Arc 2 Island, but if he does cameo in the Kenobi series, I think all fans can agree it's going to feel very well placed and right at home with some of the other big legacy characters from the prequels. So I'm very excited to hear that Frank Oz was on set and Yoda is one of my all-time favourite characters. And in a series that already promises some major cameos, this might be the most nostalgia-filled Star Wars project in years. So now my dear friends, we're going to move on and talk about a new tease for The Mandalorian Season 3 by Giancarlo Esposito. As we know, Season 3 begins filming this month and it seems as though the Moff Gideon actor has hyped up what we can expect. In a teasing tweet, Giancarlo Esposito hinted that Mando might not be holding onto the Darksaber for very long. The tweet reads as follows, The Mandalorian is now the rightful owner of the Darksaber, but for how long? A big point of speculation ever since the Mandalorian Season 2 finale is what will happen now that Din Djarin has the Darksaber. With Moff Gideon now arrested by the New Republic, the main competitor for the Darksaber is Bo-Katan. While many of us would like to see Mando reign Mandalore, there seems to be more trouble up ahead that stands in his way. And even if for whatever reason he can reconcile his differences with Bo-Katan, there could be other Mandalorian clans out there who are after the Darksaber as well. Mandalorians who are not as forgiving or open-minded as the Night Owls. I'm really pumped to see which direction the Mandalore story arc goes in Season 3, and from this tweet, it does seem as though the Darksaber is going to remain a focal element of the story. The best thing about this upcoming season is that we know almost nothing about what's next. Before season 2 dropped, we knew that the story, in large part, was going to focus on Mando looking for Jedi to hand Grogu to, but going into season 3, we simply do not have a clue. Until trailers start dropping, which won't be until early to mid-2022 at the earliest, we just have to keep our eyes open for little tidbits of information like this. Giancarlo Esposito has always been great with teasing things to come. Of all the cast and crew, it doesn't get much better than his interviews and tweets. So we will keep our eyes peeled. So now, my dear Megalorians, we're going to change the pace a little bit and talk about a really exciting preview for War of the Bounty Hunters. The preview for the next issue has teased 
Darth Maul's revenge from the grave. It might sound confusing, but let's dive into it. Star Wars is teasing Darth Maul's revenge from beyond the grave in a new preview for Marvel's upcoming War of the Bounty Hunters number 4. Things are heating up at Crimson Dawn's auction, where they're selling Han Solo and Carbonite as the reborn syndicate created by Maul looks to make a name for itself in the galaxy once more. Crimson Dawn's leader, Lady Kira, who was Han Solo's first love, clearly has grand plans as leader of this impressive organization, though it's possible the plans were founded with the groundwork laid out by none other than Maul himself to be received in the event of his death. After Darth Maul survived the Clone Wars and the Siege of Mandalore, he set to work on founding Crimson Dawn, a large organization that was as well connected as they were ruthless in their endeavors amongst the shadows. However, Kira took the reins as Maul's second in command after killing Dryden Voss in Solo, a Star Wars story. While the details are largely unknown, it was revealed in the animated series Star Wars Rebels that Maul was on a quest of his own to get revenge on Obi-Wan Kenobi, facing him on Tatooine before meeting his demise. However, it seems as though Lady Kira kept Crimson Dawn together in the shadows as they've since re-emerged after the event of The Empire Strikes Back to auction off Han Solo, who they stole from Boba Fett, who was making his way from Cloud City to Jabba's palace. Now, StarWars.com has released a new preview for War of the Bounty Hunters number 4, taking place immediately after Darth Vader's duel with Kira in the previous issue. The preview sees Kira having retreated to her private quarters, revealing her possession of a Sith holocron that could very well have carried some sort of will or instructions from Darth Maul himself. And here is the synopsis for the upcoming issue. The war continues. The true machinations of the theft of Han Solo from Boba Fett become clear. As one-time lover of Solo, Kira has returned her terrifying criminal organization, Crimson Dawn, to the galaxy. Kira used Han to bring the most powerful players in the galaxy together, and now the pieces are moving towards their endgame. Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Leia Organa, Valance, Aphra, the Hutts, all are vying for the ultimate prize, while Boba Fett's stuck in the middle, a simple man just trying to get what's his. Now, it is worth saying that Kira's possession of a Sith holocron is a massive deal, especially if it contains any information from Maul himself. Interestingly enough, Kira did mention to Darth Vader during their duel that her master knew quite a bit about Vader himself and Darth Sidious. A reminder that Darth Maul knew Palpatine's true identity, as well as knowing the grand plan from the start. And of course, this ties back to what Maul told Ahsoka in the Clone Wars Season 7. So we must ask the question, is it possible that Maul shared this knowledge and more, storing it in the Sith holocron for Kira to use to ensure Crimson Dawn's survival, along with a potential means of finally getting revenge against his old master and dark apprentice. While Darth Maul's plans for revenge against Darth Sidious were thwarted during the Clone Wars, Lady Kira will honor his legacy during the original trilogy timeline with a new attempt as she strives to secure Crimson Dawn's place in the galaxy. War of the Bounty Hunters number 4 releases on September 8th. Some very exciting stuff indeed and I'm a huge advocate and fan of the War of the Bounty Hunters series. I've loved every issue so far and the crossover event as well. These comics are a must read before the Book of Boba Fett drops. They provide tons of context for what happened between episodes 5 and 6 and you get to learn more about Boba Fett's rivalries with certain characters like Kira, Bosk, Zuka, Forlom and much more. But that, my dear friends, is where we part ways. Let me know all of your thoughts of today's video in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are. And also be sure to check out my Patreon. The link is down there in the description. But otherwise, my friends, I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.